do a different one right now. And I'm going to tell you what the intention of the admissions committee is towards you. So the admissions committee would like you to know that you have been accepted. Case Western Yay! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Justin and I'll be starting medical school in just a couple of months. With that being said, my application cycle, although technically not over, is coming to an end, and that means a new application cycle is about to begin. So I thought it'd be cool to go through what ended up being a crazy year. I really started to gear up for the application cycle in January by making my school list, because I had taken the MCAT that previous summer, um, and I think it is very important to have your MCAT score before you make your school list, even though stats aren't everything, and we'll touch on that later. Um, it just really helps you narrow down what schools you'll be competitive for. So my school list, in no particular order, was Harvard, UPenn, Stanford, UCSF, NYU, Columbia, Cornell, Michigan, UPitt, UCLA, Case Western, Vanderbilt, Chicago, Yale, UCSD, Kaiser, Mount Sinai, Northwestern, Ohio State, Cincinnati, Boston, Virginia, Albert Einstein, Tufts, USF, Miami, Keck, Carl, Illinois, Indiana, Toledo, Wayne State, and Wright State. Just for reference, I do have a 4.0 and scored a 520 on the MCAT. I also have residency in Ohio, which means I am in-state for four of my schools. I highly recommend using MSAR for all of your school research. It has a lot of good info on there about GPA and MCAT averages and in-state preferences and so on. So throughout the spring, I was writing my personal statement, my extracurricular and activity section, and also asking for letters of recommendation. Do not underestimate how long it's going to take you to write a good personal statement. This process takes a lot of writing, rewriting, editing, and things like that. So definitely give yourself a lot of time to get it into a place where you are comfortable with it and ready to submit it. I ended up finalizing everything in late May and was ready to submit my AMCAS application in June when it opened. Uh, I definitely rushed this process a little bit and found a couple of typos after submitting. So definitely sit on your application for a few days and have people that you trust read over it and make sure that uh, there's nothing that you've glanced over because at this point you're going to have read your application so many times that all the words just kind of blend together. Uh, so definitely, definitely, definitely have other people read your application before submitting. So after you submit your primary application, it's secondary season, meaning number one, I hope you're ready to break open the piggy bank. Secondaries can cost anywhere from $75 to $100 depending on the school. I applied to 31 schools so you can see how that ends up being a boatload of money. And number two, it's time to pre-write. Each school will have around two to three questions um, asking things like why this school or what can you bring to our medical school class. So it takes a while to get these done. Um, getting your primary application verified took about a month for me. So from June 3rd to June 28th, which is when I received my first secondary application, uh, I was pre-writing all my secondaries. Again, I applied to 31 schools, which means I ended up writing over 100 pages of essays, which was very painful. Uh, the process was very similar to my personal statement writing, where I was making uh, first drafts, rewriting second drafts, and things like that. But a lot of the schools have similar prompts, so you kind of get better at writing secondaries as you go. I wouldn't re necessarily recommend reusing your essays for different schools and just changing the name of the schools, but I do know some people who have done that um, and have had successful cycles, so teach their own, but I tried to write or individually write the essays for every school that I could. Uh, I also tried to get each secondary in within two weeks of receiving it. This isn't a hard and fast rule, so don't worry about it too much, but it just gave me a better way to stay accountable in terms of submitting my secondaries. I got my first secondary on June 28th from NYU, and my last secondary all the way in August from my alma mater, U Toledo. After you submit your secondaries, you get into what I believe is the worst part of the entire cycle, waiting. It took over seven months for some schools to get back to me after submitting my secondary, but that's just how the cycle goes because so many students are applying to all of these schools. In order of when they were received, these are the interviews that I got. My first interview invite was from Wayne State on July 24th, and I submitted their secondary on July 19th. I was really excited to get an interview here, especially so early on in the cycle and in such a quick turnaround compared to when I submitted my secondary, um, and really loved the interview in the school. My second interview invite was from Cincinnati on August 10th, and I submitted my secondary on July 8th. So you can kind of see this waiting period that I'm talking about. This was my only in-person interview, but I really enjoyed being able to see the campus in person, um, and the campus and facilities were just beautiful. 
I got my third interview invite from Case Western on August 15th. I submitted my secondary there on July 22nd. Um, and I really think this was my best interview of the entire cycle. I really vibed with both the student and the faculty interviewer, and it was just an overall really fun day, and it quickly became one of my top choices. I got my fourth interview invite from UCSD on August 18th. I submitted their secondary on July 8th. This interview was a total surprise, and I remember being so excited about the prospect of going to medical school in San Diego. Unfortunately, it was definitely my worst interview of the entire cycle. I just flubbed a bunch of the MMIs and dropped the ball on the basically the entire day, but you know you're not going to have your best interview performance every day. I got my next interview invite from Boston on August 24th. I submitted their secondary on July 19th. This interview was, again, unexpected, but I really loved the diverse po patient population that the school served and definitely could picture myself going there. Uh, my next interview invite came from U Toledo, my alma mater, on September 6th. I submitted their uh, secondary on August 16th and I got the interview invite a few days after my birthday, so not a bad birthday present. I got my next interview invite from Virginia on September 8th. I submitted their secondary on July 19th. Definitely wasn't expecting an interview here either just because I was out of state, but all the students and faculty were really nice, and loved their curriculum, and definitely could, ex could uh, envision myself attending that school as well. My next interview invite came from Cornell on September 9th. I submitted their secondary on July 16th. I was in the library when I got the email for the interview invite and I remember freaking out. I could not focus on any of my work afterwards um, and just the prospect of living in New York while doing medical school was really awesome to me. Um, and I won't lie, it was my top choice. Mount Sinai sent me an interview invite on October 5th. I submitted their secondary on July 9th. Again, New York was a dream and I thought it would be cool to go to medical school in a hospital rather than the academic settings that most of these other schools were at. The last four interview invites I got were from USF on October 28th, Carl, Illinois on November 18th, Kaiser Permanente on January 11th, and Ohio State on February 24th. I submitted all these secondaries in July and received the interviews when I listed them, so you can see that long waiting period that I'm talking about again here. So a couple of notes here, I didn't actually attend my interview for the University of South Florida just because I didn't think I would attend the program even if I was accepted. Uh, and Carl Illinois actually doesn't have an interview and opt for a showcase event for invited students instead. So like I said before, stats definitely are not everything. My stats were pretty competitive for top schools um, and rankings really do not matter all that much anyway and we'll get into that uh, in a later video. But I didn't get much love from these top schools. So uh, definitely pay attention to things like your writing and your quality of experiences as they'll have a bigger effect on if you'll get an interview from a certain school. In terms of the interview process, I was pretty glad that they were online. It saved me a lot of money in terms of having to book flights and book hotels. Uh, the one thing is, it is kind of difficult to connect with someone through a computer screen. Um, and you might experience something called Zoom fatigue because you're just sitting in front of your computer for five or six hours throughout the whole entire interview day and it can kind of drain your energy, especially if your interview is after all of the informational sessions. Now moving on to the exciting part, the acceptances and rejections. Um, October 15th is the first day that schools are allowed to send out acceptances. Unfortunately, this fell on a Saturday for me, so Monday, October 17th was the first day that schools actually started accepting students. I remember waking up that morning really excited. I told myself I wasn't expecting anything. But nonetheless, I was refreshing my email probably every 10 seconds. Um, and I started getting a little nervous because people on Reddit were already posting about their acceptances and where they had been accepted to. But I hadn't really heard anything yet. And that changed around noon when I got my first call from Case Western telling me that I was accepted into their medical school. Uh, I was doing a group project with my girlfriend and my best friends at the time. And it was definitely a core memory celebrating with them and being super excited about, you know, finally being at peace with this whole crazy process. About an hour later, I got a call from Cincinnati telling me I was accepted, and I got an email from Wayne State and from Virginia later that day as well. So I was very blessed and very lucky to have four acceptances before the end of October 17th. That streak, however, did not last that long as I was waitlisted from UCSD, again, my worst inter interview, on October 28th. And my first rejection of the cycle actually came a lot earlier on October 7th from Indiana University. My final decisions came out as waitlists from Cornell on February 24th, which I was very disappointed about. Uh, Mount Sinai came out as a waitlist on March 24th, and Ohio State came out as a waitlist on April 3rd. 
So as you can tell, it was a chaotic year. There were times when I was writing secondaries and also doing interview prep for multiple schools. So staying organized is definitely key to the whole process. Uh, in the end, it came out to a total of 31 primary and secondary applications, 13 interview invites, 11 interviews attended, and 21 rejections, including Harvard, UPenn, Stanford, UCSF, NYU, Columbia, Michigan, U Pitt, UCLA, Vanderbilt, Chicago, Yale, Northwestern, Albert Einstein, Tufts, Miami, Keck, Indiana, and Wright State. So although I got six acceptances and four wait lists, I got a whole bunch of other rejections and that's okay. I'm very lucky to have had a successful application cycle and have the opportunity to choose between different medical schools, but ultimately I have chosen to attend the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine and cannot wait to start my journey there. If you're interested in following my journey, please subscribe and stay tuned for more content.